G'day YouTube, my name's Lance, welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, the weather report, it's bloody cold. <laughs> I've even got, I've got jeans on, i oh, back to my steel cap work boots and a t-shirt under my shirt. I haven't put a coat on yet, um, it's not that cold, but this morning it's five degrees, feels like 2.3 according to Bureau and um, I haven't looked outside if there's a frost, it's too dark. <laughs> um, yeah, the sun's not up yet, it, it's, there's just a little glow over to the east there, so, oh, it won't be long, but um, I'm up the shed getting stuck into it in the, before daylight. Um, well, this time of year, as we're getting into the shortest day, I'm, I'm at work every day before daylight. Um, if I'm up at the shed here, um, sometimes Saturday, Sunday, it'll be seven o'clock or um, you know, sometimes 7.30 even before I get up the shed, but most of the times it's you know, 6, 7 o'clock in there somewhere. And um, through the week it's 6 a.m. Um, leave the house half past five, I suppose, and come up here and get organised or get to work. But um, driving to work at the moment, as I, as I head east towards the shop, um, it's a nice time of year. A lot of mornings, you can before the sun comes up, you can just see that that little line on the horizon because we don't have clouds they're gone for a while <laughs> um, and you can just see that little line and if I'm running a few minutes late sometimes you just see that that red glow just as the sun's about to come up so yeah it's a it's a pretty nice time of year um, a bit chilly for us but um, a, a chilly morning where there's nice clear skies is lovely but a, a chilly morning where it's rain and drizzle <laughs> oh you can jump that um, not my thing. Oh, um, you know, my old man used to always say if someone was slow, he'd say, oh, he's slow as a wet week. And then, um, yeah, like a, a wet week's a bloody long time, I reckon. Um, so I can understand that one. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, we're surviving. The days are beautiful. And I, I must admit on these cold mornings, um, even though I get here early, I get stuck in and I do a bit. But then when I feel like a bit of a break, um, I go and sit in the doorway over here. I, I leave the back doors closed because if there's a sneaky breeze, um, we call the winter breeze the mother-in-law's breath. You know, that cold wind down the back of your neck. <laughs> so um, we call them, yeah, so we keep the doors shut to keep the mother-in-law's breath out and um, have a little sit in the sun there and thaw out a little bit. And um, it's, it's just bloody lovely. Um, this time of year, from wearing thongs and shorts, my legs are brown as buggery. Looks like I've been at the beach all my life, just from, yeah, kicking back in the sun an hour, well, wouldn't even been an hour a day, but uh, I'd probably do a couple of 10 or 15 minute sessions just sitting back there thawing out, so, yeah, it's nice. What else happened through the week? Oh, Jesus, <laughs> what didn't bloody happen? Um, yeah, oh, oh, a few things. Um, in, in the office, I... <laughs> I had old Nevy, Nevy from the club ring up and he wanted a meeting with me and um, I was, yeah, all right. So he come into the office and he was shitty. And um, I said, I oh, have a seat, Nevy, what can I do? Yeah, yeah, how you going and all that. And he just rips it right up me, straight up. He says, I've come to talk about all these lies coming out of your office. And I was, <laughs> what are you talking about? He said, oh, you said that... Um, yeah, when we did the letter, and he rang me up and blew shit out of me for six minutes, um, he said, you told me I called you a liar. And I said, yeah, you did. And he said, I did not use that word. And I said, yeah, I'm bloody sure you did. And he says, no. And I thought about it, and I said, well, yeah, Nev, look, I might, um, I might concede that. But I said, you left me in no uncertain terms that you thought I was full of crap. And bah, but he said, I didn't use that word. And I said, so you thought I was being untruthful, which I was, and it turned out that I wasn't. And um, what I was asked to do, and Alan, the secretary, was asked to do, we did exactly. He didn't read the letter and um, blamed everyone else for not reading the letter, but that's, that's a different thing. And um, I said, well, if thinking I was untruthful with my dealings with you, um, don't you think that's lying? Ah, oh, but I didn't say the word. And I said, all right, I could probably, you know, I'll probably go with you there. And he says, all right, well, I demand a, a letter to retract the email you sent me 
telling me, I sent him an email telling him not to, you know, I didn't appreciate being called a liar and um, that's why he took offence at. And so I said, all right, well, I'll do the right thing. I'll retract that email. So I had to send him an email, do up the email and, um, yeah, Neb, as per our meeting today, um, yeah, I didn't, um, I'd like to withdraw the word liar off that email. Um, but, um, you know, you said you believed I wasn't um, being truthful with you. So <laughs> that's how stupid some of this shit is, eh? So it was the same outcome. He thought I was full of shit. Um, same outcome, but he didn't actually use the word liar. So um, he thought I was being untruthful and, and yeah. <laughs> this is bloody bullshit, isn't it? Club rubbish, eh? And so um, anyway, and, and um, after I agreed to do that, he sort of calmed down a bit and I was, I was trying to tell him what we're up to with the rally because he's not interested in it much. And, um, and I was sort of saying, oh, you know, we've looked at the liquor licence thing and we're doing this and that and all the rest. And he, he wasn't really interested and the, the club raffle lady, she come to see me because she couldn't get any, um, she was looking for the, when you have a raffle, and this is an interesting thing in Australia, um, when you're a not-for-profit organisation and you have a raffle, so, and um, the raffles that the club has for like a lucky door prize or a, um, um, when we have rallies often, um, either myself or businesses around town, you give the club some stuff to raffle off and, and at Agro Trend every year they have quite a big one. And they're telling me they made eight hundred dollars out of that one year, and so um, it's yeah, you know, it's not to be sneezed at. And anyway, we have a lady in the club who looks after all that. That's her thing. She loves doing it. And um, she come to see me, and she said, "You know, I'm a bit worried about these raffles." She says, "I've I've been asking for a set of guidelines, and um, you know, I, I don't want to be breaking the law with it. And someone saying you need a license or need a ticket for a raffle, and all that sort of thing." So. Um, uh, yeah, she was a bit concerned about it because I was getting her on, on, um, on the team for after after Agro Trends finished in town, we'll start right on the rally, and I was um, I was asking her to um, help fundraise for the rally, yeah, you know, help us out with it, and she's happy to. And she said, "Oh, I want a couple of hats, club hats." So, so she'd been asking for club caps apparently with the club logo on it, and um, well, yeah, I'd never heard it, but anyway, um, asking for them, and no one's listening to her, and. Um, she wanted a name badge. Oh, shit, sorry about that. Um, wanted a name badge and all that, and she's not getting anywhere because she, she was looking for a letter to take to businesses and say, you know, I'm the, my name's so-and-so, I'm the club fundraiser, and um, we're looking for donations for our rally and all that. And, and um, she couldn't get a letter. Um, the secretary gave one to Nevy, but Nevy wouldn't give it to her because he wasn't ready yet. So anyway, the secretary gave her a letter in the long run, but she came and saw me, and I said, look, just go downtown, go to the go to the Shoreline, Shoreline Embroidery is where they hold the club logo, I took it to them years ago and um, I said just go and get yourself and she's got a team, there's a team of two of them, there's a pair of them, ladies that do it, I said just go and get yourself some caps with the company logo, get the ones you choose, put it on the Queensland Tractor Spares account and we haven't got to go for all the meat and bullshit and um, I said when you want a name tag um, I'll sort that, Queensland Tractor Spares will sort that and then we'll be off and racing so um, so just trying to get that. So she wanted to feel good, you know, feel professional with going to businesses. Not, um, we do have club shirts, but she just wanted to feel good about it. So I said, yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. So um, I said, just go and put the stuff on my account. <laughs> so I believe that's happened. Um, it'll probably take them a while to print them, I suppose. <laughs> but um, and anyway, so after she left, I got all the club rules, the, the raffle rules in Queensland. and. Um, I downloaded the government documents on it, then I went through them and I've highlighted all the important parts to our club that were pertaining to our club. And in Queensland, you can have a raffle, a fundraising raffle, if you're a, if you're a non, not-for-profit organisation, um, you know, a community organisation like we are, um, and it's for fundraising, not for an individual or not for a commercial entity, so not for a business or a person, and it's, it's for the club. Um, you can have a raffle to the value of up to $2,000 in ticket sales. You're allowed to sell $2,000 worth of tickets in that one raffle, um, and you don't need a permit. Um, the, goods, the goods raffled off um, need 
you know, they, they like that to be around 20% of the ticket sales. So if you have a $20 item, to, for an example, you have a $20 item, well, you know, you could sell $100 worth of tickets and that's fine. Um, but, you know, not to say if you sold 150, you'd have to pack it up. It's just, yeah, you know, you've got to try and estimate how popular it's going to be, which I suppose is hard. So, so I've printed all that out for her and, um, well, actually, I've got it on, a, on an Adobe, on a PDF, and I've, um, I've highlighted all the relevant parts, and I've emailed it to her, and so that's all ro off and racing. So, so I was trying to discuss with old Nevy that, and he says, yeah, we know the rules. And I said, but she wanted, to, wanted it in writing. No, well, we knew what we could do. <laughs> I said, yeah, okay, beauty. And, um, and I said, oh, we found out we don't need a liquor licence for a one-day event for eight hours. Oh, you don't? And I said, no, no, we've um, got through the, we've been working in the background and we've downloaded all the government information again. And as a not-for-profit, um, no individual or company's making money. It's going to be a community organisation that gets the money from it and all that. We're allowed to make money. And we can have a, an alcohol licence for around eight hours. Um, and usually you can have about one a year. But you don't need a permit. Um, you don't have to do anything. And... Um, where a normal bar, you have to have an RSA, Responsible Service of Alcohol, people in there with their tickets. Yeah, they've done the course. It appears as a community organisation that you can have club members in there selling a beer, but every beer must be opened. Um, you're not allowed to sell takeaways or anything like that. So I was trying to tell him that. And, uh, oh, you don't? No, no. Anyway, and another person... Another person come and put $1,000 into the kitty for the rally, another club member, and I said, oh, Nev, we've got $5,000 now um, for the rally. Um, we've got an extra $1,000. Oh, OK. And off he went. I've got to go, he said. And off he went. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> it's, he's not happy. Um, but anyway, I don't know what we do about that. Um, we're just going to do our best to have this rally. And, um, and uh, it was just disappointing. You, know, you try and include him in stuff, and the next thing it'll be, you blokes are doing stuff without including me. But... Um, you try and include people in things and um, they're just not interested. So anyway, so today um, we have the club committee meeting up in the pool room. Um, and that's another thing with the management. They, um, we're trying to have club, you know, we need to have committee meetings to sort stuff out and get direction and find things out and, and work out, you know, between us. We're a bunch of mates, so we've got to work stuff out. But this is only the second one for a year. Um, so it's at home here just because we got the place, but Nevy's a chair. And um, <coughs> so see what comes up there. Um, the master built cane loader that was coming here, um, <laughs> I'm going to pull the pin on it. Um, it's been coming here for around four months now, and I've even got down I've, where Dave had his, um, all the timber for the railway racks and all that, the railway trolleys. You know, I've shifted that, I've cleaned the site. It's a good solid site with road base on it just out the front. It's got grass on it, but it's road base underneath. And I've got a sling there for lifting the boom out to do the lift cylinder and because um, it's got a big boom on it. And I'll see if I can find a photo I'm popping. But it's on a David Brown implementic tractor and it's got a big crane boom, but apparently it's pouring down over the bonnet when they try and use it. So we have to pull that mask apart and get the ram out and reseal the ram as well as doing a service. And I told him, yeah, look, I'll, if you bring it out here, I'll pressure clean it because it's, it's just been sitting. So um, I said, yeah, look, I'll do that, no worries. And um, I'll service it and all that. But um, we're coming up the end of financial year, busy time of year. Um, we just flat out and I haven't seen it. Not a word. And um, I offered the, they were looking for someone to pump the tyres up. So I said, look, I, I can do it if you want. Just give me a yell when you want to go. And at the next meeting, no, oh, no, it was done. You missed out. And I said, fuck, all right then. So, um, but I'm coming to the busy time of year. We've got rallies to go to and things like that. And um, I have about two hours a day that I can put into the shed and up the back here. And um, look, there's just nothing happening, and it's the end of financial year and all that, so I'm going to pull the pin on it. I'm going to tell them, look, you know, it's all right for the old retired blokes that have got all day, every day to organise something, but um, time is valuable to me here, and I don't think they realise that. And, um, and I do spend a lot of time with the gear anyway, like that, that famous engine I did up, the um, 414 injection pump. 
I still didn't get time this week to do the injectors on the 414 um, for the other top loader, but um, Tony's coming, the fellow that I'm helping with the engine, or Tony's doing it, I'm just, I'm just there now and then. Um, I'll try and get them done today, so when he comes to the committee meeting, he's vice president of the club, um, when he comes to the committee meeting, I can give him his injectors and his pump, and um, I've got some glow plugs here for him, and, um, <coughs> and that'll have that part out of my hair, and I can concentrate on what I need to do here. So, um, look, I, I just can't be dicked around forever with these things, so I'm going to pull the pin on it. Um, there's plenty of other people in the club that have pressure cleaners and know how to change oil and change a fuel filter and all that, but I, I just thought it, I'd help out, but it seems... Anyway, I'm going to... At the committee meeting today, I'm just going to withdraw my offer to do it because it's just it's just dicking me around. And, um, and yeah... <laughs> And I, got, I do have enough to do, believe it or not. <laughs> so, anyway, um, so I've only got like half a day. It's at two o'clock at my place and um, in the pool room. And so I've only got half a day today to get shit done. Um, <coughs> pardon me. On the weekend, um, yeah, Tim and Ellie had a party to go to. So we ended up with three grandkids here. So there goes your weekend, eh? So <laughs> Saturday Arvo. Um, young Freya and them are up pretending to drive. She likes that little Dexter because it's... Oh, no, she likes the red one because it's red, but she likes the Dexter because, you know, you can sit there and go broom, broom, honk, honk and all that. So, so we had to do a little bit of that. And um, the... Yesterday morning, like, the kids didn't get picked up till after lunch yesterday and um, probably one or two of them, you know, after lunch sometimes. And uh, I had young Arrow up here and um, he's seven now, and I had him on a little 3 8 nut gun pulling the boards off the carry-all. Um, as you remember, my carry-all was sitting out the front and the boards are rubbish on it, and I painted it the grey for the um, FE35, so um, it's a Ferguson one, so it has to go Ferguson light grey. So um, I had him up here and we, yeah, got him on the nut gun and yeah, once we got the nut off, we'd yeah, get the bolt and put the spring washer on and put the, put the nut on. And oh, We had to screw the nut down into the socket to get the stud out. So, um, yeah, he got halfway through it and he says, oh, I'm going up the house, Boppy. And I said, no, you can't do that. And he says, why not? And I said, well, we haven't finished the job. I said, when you start a job, you've got to finish it. You know, try and work on it. It's only a little job. So, anyway, stayed doing that. And pulled all the bolts out and we've got them in a pot and got the boards off and um, I thought I'd get the air sander going, and give him a turn at sanding. And um, he was sort of not bad holding the sander there, but I said, look, we've got to put a dust mask on you to keep the dust out. Well, as soon as I put the dust mask on, he said, nah, I'm out of here. <laughs> he didn't like that bloody dust mask. So anyway, so I've, I've finished sanding. I've, I'll, I'll take you for a little walk shortly and show you. Um, I do have some old Sparex. Paint here, and what's that? Eight two double one. I just got to check. Yeah, eight two double one four. Massey Ferguson light grey or Ferguson light grey, and I've had this here for ages, and so that's T twenty grey. Look, it's a. It's, I, I know there's a half a million uh, <laughs> Ferguson grey greys, um, but look, I. I prefer to use, in, in, and look, I have mates that they, they get the paint mixed and they get the shade perfect to what they had, which is fine, you know, good on them. But um, I like to use something like that so I know if later on I've got to touch it up or I get a scratch or I've got to do something with it, I can just grab a tin of that and it, it will match, stir it up properly and it will match. So, um, so that's, that's going on the carry-all. Um, yeah, I've got little bits left over, so whether they're... It's, it's still slopping around in there, so I suppose it's all right, but we filter it in and it's only a carry-all after all. Um, but I will buy new timber. I had um, Tasmanian oak that I put down as the floorboards and look, I, I let it go too long. If I hopped in earlier, um, I would have been able to save the boards and sand it, but you know, I was gonna, gonna, gonna and <laughs> didn't bloody get round to it. So now it's cost me a few boards. So anyway, won't break the bank. Well, it might, but anyway. <sighs> <coughs> Pardon me. Um, with the um, with the lady, the fundraiser for the club, um, she um, 
asked me for a couple of boards, you know, a couple of chopping board sort of things for, um, for, well, uh, we have a lucky door prize. I make them for that for her all the time, you know. The last run was about a dozen of them, but um, she wants a couple of boards of appreciation done for people and, um, and just a bit of a stockpile sort of thing. So I made a couple of boards and um, put the club logo and I, I put my Bundy Bears thing on the back and... Um, yeah, after that there was a little bit left over, so I made myself a board. I had it on Facebook, but um, it's, I think it's um, stringy bark. It's quite a heavy little board. It's a hardwood, and this is just for me. And, you know, I've been making boards for every bugger. I've never made myself one till now. <laughs> so, a dude wants one, or the kids want one, or bloody mate wants one, or, you know, the trip up to the Cape, we did a board. Um, I suppose we have one of them up in the kitchen, but I've done them for Jude and that, but I've never just... I wanted to do myself one because I, I often, if I come home from work, I'll have a cup of coffee, a couple of slices of cheese and head up the back here and um, get going. And I'm always chasing around for a little board and things like that. So I made this. Uh, so I put it on the laser and then I burnt the, that little Ferguson... Ferguson tractors... Ferguson tractor and Ferguson implements. So that come out pretty good, eh? That was with the laser. I had to find a file and dick around with it and get it to work. That took a bit of doing. But um, on this hardwood, um, you'll notice it's a little bit light through there and a little bit light through there. And when you're lasering things, the, the hardness of the wood affects how it burns. So... Um, and just on that one piece, you can see this, the, the piece at the bonnet of the tractor must have been a bit um, easier to burn, a bit softer than in here. And this harder wood, it didn't burn in as deep. You can still feel a lip, no worries at all. But um, yeah, just how it goes. So I made myself that little board. Um, it's just laminated shelving board from um, Bunnings. And sometimes when you're going around routing it, you'll get a little it'll knock a little piece out. So I've got a bit of filler in there. Um, I could get some filler the right colour, but it was only for me, so I didn't give a toss, really. It was mainly just so stuff didn't get stuck in it and not get washed out. And so, yeah, so that's a nice little thing. Um, I, I like it. Um, the, um, I might make a few more. But I mean, I got that cold, um, that <laughs> that cold nose dribble. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, now I've made it, I like it. I used it last night to, to put a pot on. You know, I had a bowl of meat and, um, yeah, we did, um, we did pulled beef in the slow cooker for Saturday night when the kids were here and um, I had some of that in a plate. And so, yeah, heat it up and then put the plate on here to eat it. And um, It's got that, um, um, I think it's done in... Not done on Watson. Anyway, it's a, it's got the kitchen board wax on it, and it seems to soak in. I might give it another quick coat today, but um, that's a good thing. I've had two or three people ask for them, so I don't know. I don't know if I'll do them or not. Put them on the website. Oh, I don't know. It's just another bloody job. Um, I do have some a nice slab of uh, still a laminated board from Bunnings of beech timber up there. It's a lighter timber. Um, that that for a board is quite heavy. Yeah, you can feel it's, it's a beefy sort of thing. Um, the beach is a lot lighter timber. But I think the beach, being a lighter timber, I think this logo would burn in better. So um, I might not be finished with this. <laughs> anyway, see what happens. Um, I, don't, I don't know, I might make a few for people who watch the channel, but I'll, I'll just see. I'm not, I'm not committing to anything. Um, like I say, I've got enough jobs to do. <laughs> so... We'll see. I serviced the forklift on Saturday morning. <laughs> the poor old forklift is one of those things where um, you use it often and you think, oh, it needs an oil change. I'll do that soon. I'll do that soon. And, and it certainly doesn't get the love it needs. But I've got the roof on the top, the flashing light, the new seat, the seat cover. Um, and I thought I'd give it a service. So um, it had a Baldwin B113 filter on it. And so I, I went to the shop and I, I did the crossover and it turns out it was a Bearco CR, CR596 or something like that. And the filters looked exactly the same. And it had a little standpipe inside. 
and um, the stand pipes were to hold oil in the filter so they didn't so it didn't run back so um, some of the Massey Ferguson's had them in them um, but anyway so I got the oil out got the new oil got the filter the screw on I could get it on about two turns and it would bloody stop and it'd feel like the thread was buggered and I thought oh what's going on so I pulled the filter out and I, we had a filter one time we've had a couple of them over the years and wherever they get manufactured it, they must put the dye in twice and it has double start on the thread and one's a good one and one's not and I thought oh I must have one of those bloody double start threads so pulled it out and put it back and I couldn't work the bloody thing out so I had another little filter over on the wall there for a um, um, for Judy's car and so I had a look at that yep quarter three quarter 16 TPI so try and screw that on no it couldn't do because it had a stand pipe in it and the filter was too short well it turns out the new filter look it was about two millimeters shorter than the old filter and it was hitting that stand pipe so lucky it didn't go on because that stand pipe would have been blocked off so it would have been forcing oil into the outside of the filter and yeah, there would have been restricting oil flow. So when the oil filter that was on it, the Baldwin B113 was on it, it must have only had about two millimetres at the top of that pipe for the oil pressure. It's always had good oil pressure. Like the light doesn't come on or nothing. But um, towards the end, I thought the light might have been a little bit on a little bit longer at cold start than normal. But anyway, and I thought, God, bloody, that's a shit idea. So I checked the filter out and... Um, the filters with the, with the rubber inside, you know, you look in all the holes and the rubber inside, well, that's an anti-drain back valve. So that's, the, the idea of that is, so when the oil pumps in, um, it's held up in the filter. It doesn't just all drain away. And so um, I had a look and I thought, well, the, the proper thing to do would be try somehow. I, I actually had a 916 UNF tap and I, I put the tap up each filter just to check the threads and the threads were beautiful. It didn't remove any metal. And... Um, so I ended up pulling that little stand pipe out and I thought oh, I'll chop that off. Then I thought well there's no, no really need for it. And it was that loose in there. I was wondering if time um, it had come up a little bit. You know I could have locked tied it in but I've, I've chosen to leave it out um, because the filter did have a bite, had, did have a, um, uh, anti-leak back on it. So, so I've taken a little stand pipe off and my, old, my new filter just bolted straight on and It'll never be a problem again. Um, I've got 20W70 engine oil in it because it's a worn out old girl and it went under the flood years ago and things like that. So I've got 20W70 with a little bit of Maury's oil additive in it and um, that'll last. Um, <coughs> I'm, I'm actually slowly working on it over the next year um, just to bring it all up the safety things that I've let slide over the years. So when I take it into the rally, um, we can use it for um, yeah, load and unload and whatever we need to do just to save, save manual labour. So that's a go. Um, <laughs> with the, with the, I was going to get on the mower and do some mowing and, and the mower's hit 300 hours and it was time for a service. So yesterday morning I bloody um, I got it going, no worries, and bloody um, dropped the oil out and changed the filter and put the new oil in and went to start it and nothing and it's had there's a little starter relay under the, on the John Deere's on the right hand side it's got two wires and it's got two little safety wires coming in and um, I knew that was playing up and, and how I'd been getting by is I had a screwdriver on the side there I've ordered one I'm just waiting for the new solenoid and I've ordered one and I, I get the screwdriver and I lean around and rrr, 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 off she goes and away she went so um, but yesterday Clunk, clunk, nothing. Just the tiniest of sparks. And I thought, God, the bloody thing must have buggered right up. So anyway, I thought I'd go and get the battery charger while I was finishing the service and put the battery charger on the battery and wouldn't take a charge. The battery buddy dumped on me. So, um, so yeah, I've, I've taken a photo of the battery and, and Mondays in at work there, the battery man comes in to check our batteries on stock and see what new batteries we need. So... So we need a new mower battery now. So <laughs> I'll winter claim me mower battery. It, it's inside. It's under the boat, you know, where the baby's on the hoist there, the mower. So um, 
So yeah, I was going to run around and make the place look a bit tidy for the meeting. Uh, it's not that bad, but you know, we're getting along, a few little long stringy bits around the place. And um, this time of year, you only mow every month or, you know, you, you don't mow that often. It, it's just very slow growing. Now we've had these cold snaps. So, so yeah, so much for that. Um, I've got the new filter on, I've got the new oil on. Um, I could probably run a battery over and jump start it and muck around, but I'm just not 100% sure um, if the battery's dropped its bundle and it's not taken a charge. And I tried another battery charger um, just to make sure the battery charger wasn't faulty. And um, I'm just not sure that it's good for the, um, the charging circuit on the motor to be putting into a battery that won't take any charge. So. Um, so yeah, I'll probably not do that. <laughs> um, so anyway, the place is going to look shaggy when we do that, but that's all right. It doesn't matter. Um, a bit like me. <laughs> so we won't get too worried. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> so today I'll probably try and blow a little bit of grey on that. I'm, I'm going to use a CRC rust converter first on the on the bare metal parts, and I'll take it for a walk up and show you anyway. Um, I'll probably put a bit of rust converter on it and try and get a bit of grey on it later in the day and that can cure over the next few weeks. Oh, it'll probably take me a week to buy the wood I want for it I suppose and so I, I reckon I do have a couple of bits up in the pallet racking that I didn't use last time because I, I bought a couple of extras so I knew what I was doing. Um, knew what I was doing, that'd be a new one wouldn't it? Um, <laughs> so, um, I'll sort that out. Um, the stainless bolts are still good that I put in last time. They just need a bit of a buff up and a, a polish up and they'll look good. Um, but apart from that, um, I've, I, while I've got the CNC set up, I had it set up last week for signs and um, I enjoyed doing that. And I, I do have signs to make. I've got those two sheets of stuff to get out and, and cut, into, um, cut into lengths that I can fit in the CNC so we can work with that. Um, that's a that's an easy easy job to do, but I um, I probably need to get them out, and I can do about 600, 630 wide maximum, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, the the CNC is six hundred by nine hundred, but I can do six hundred wide, but I can do seven thirty long without it hanging over the table, sort of thing. So. Um, so I'll probably cut it in sheets like that that I can get, you know, the, that'll dictate the size of the signs we need to do. So I need to get them out and chop that up. When that happens, who knows? Um, I do have that bit of board in the, just up the back near the CNC. So today while I'm mucking around, I might um, just start the CNC and cut out half a dozen boards this size. Um, <clears throat> they're not a big delivery platter, platter thing. They're, they're the size to... They're a one man one. Like, you know, for me, I can put a put me a cup of there and a bloody couple of bits of cheese or a bit of sausage or a bit of something there and you can wander out and sit in the sun with your little little thing. So they're not huge. Um, I think it's 220 millimetres across, which is eight, nine inch, I suppose. But wouldn't be be a, be a bee's dick under nine inch. And so um but yeah, look I I'm happy with how that come out. I'm quite I'm proud of that. I reckon she's a good bit of good bit of gear and it seems like they will be popular if I do bother to make any but and the thing I like is this little see the gear stick look how fine that is and yeah around the plough there all those little fine lines for the top link and all that <laughs> oh I get off on that that's good gear right eh? <laughs> so um looked like the um looked like the camera changed color there for a bit when I went up there Anyway, might have been the blue off my shirt. But look, that's about it. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, oh, the, um, the yellow paint and the headlights turned up last week for the Massey 20 bonnet. So I'll have to try and get some time away to paint those headlights. And um, I've got to paint the kingpin and the, the back of the seat so I can do that. So, um, yeah, so I might be doing a bit of paint. It's actually... There's no humidity, it's nice dry days, um, you know, with the, with the sun coming out, no clouds or anything. It, it's bloody, it's a bit chilly, but um, through the middle of the day there, um, painting, no worries. <coughs> um, it's a good time to do it. <coughs> bloody hell. And, um, 
But look, I'll stop waffling on. I'll get the camera. I'll just show you the carry-all. There's bugger all else to show you. Um, been one of those weeks where I, I, oh, I spent one afternoon up the front on the lathe. Um, and I have to spend a few more this week now. The, um, I actually make the, the little collars that go on the T20 PDO shafts. So where your seal runs, there's a circle up each side of a collar. And, um, yeah, you can actually... Um, bump that off, put it in a press or get a bump that, just that wear sleeve off. And so um, I make them. I make them on my lathe up the front there. And um, it saves people buying a whole new PDA shaft. If the PDA shaft's good, not twisted, the, um, the spline at the back's worth keeping, um, you can pop the PDO apart and pop the circlips off and um, yeah, knock that off and put a nice new one on. Always put Loctite under them so it doesn't leak under them. Um, but yeah, put locked up. But I make them, and we have them on the website. And I, I do a kit. I, I, th I think I just sell them. But um, we do a kit with a, a new bearing, a new seal, and a new seal surface, and a gasket. I think it might be. Um, I think we might even do the circlips with it. But anyway, you can buy a kit, so you can keep your old shaft. And the the idea is fix your old stuff, and you don't have to buy everything new all the time. So, so I have to spend. Usually that takes me probably two full afternoons to get that done. Um, yeah, by the time you jump on the lathe. And if I can get home at two, <coughs> um, I'll try and do two three hour shifts on it. And that, that usually gets half a dozen or more done. Um, and that'll last the business for a little while. So um, we can get them, get them through, the, through the system. Yeah, so I do have to do that this week. So um, yeah, that's a jeans job. Those little hot chips come off. If you're wearing just shorts and thongs, and those little chips come off, holy, they burn your legs. And um, so, yeah, that's a jeans and proper boots job when you're playing with lathes. So, um, yeah, it'll be a good thing. Um, but anyway, thanks again for dropping by. Um, as Barry says, your time is much appreciated. Oh, Barry, hang on. I'm going to go handheld. Um, I told Barry through the week that I would have a walk around my injector tester and I bloody near forgot Barry so <laughs> I'll stop the video for a sec I'll get the camera up and um we'll have a we'll show show what's going on there